stop caring so much about what other people think about you, specifically men, stop seeking out male validation, stop trying to impress people who don't give a fuck about you. Oh, Canada, the place I call my home. Haley. The story you are about to hear is true. Only the name has been changed. Are you my little helper today? I don't Are you my helper? This has more space. It does. You're so smart, dude. Yes, you may. I'm like halfway done already, but beets, baked zucchini, coconut shrimp, stormy and rice. King. Yeah, Stormy's here. He has the same thing and he won't eat it, so. I'm eating my wedding. I think you're gonna go to bed hungry. That's what's gonna happen. Okay, we can bring it in the morning. Is that your key to your motorcycle? Yeah. Can you turn it on? Mm. Good job. I'm battling right now with my luteal phase. So everything's a mess. I'm very irritable, but this is gonna help. I made a rice. He's here. Yes, he is. A rice salmon seaweed bowl with like the crispy chili crisp or whatever. So, oh, I need to add some lemon. This is so cute. Look at that. Oh my God. Cute. Little donuts. It's getting dark, it's getting cold, but standing here drinking cola. You got your beer, but losing focus. I'm wide awake, and all I want is you. It's getting late, where do we go from here? One more mistake, it's down the drain again. This is what happens when you have a toddler and you don't clean for like four days. 
like the visible spillage on there is giving me anxiety. This has been up since last week because I was like, I'm gonna shake it out and clean the floor, which I did. And then the floor got dirty again. So I cleaned it again. I'm on my second load of dishes because baking has been great. I bake again tomorrow. We need to disinfect the kitchen. And then this is the bathroom. It's Wednesday and I just haven't organized it since Saturday. And now it's crazy. So we're gonna start with this. Get a candle burning, get it going good. Today was awesome. I hope I got some good clips. I was genuinely enjoying my time. So I was having a hard time like making sure I was getting footage. But I'll sit down and kind of explain some of it to you guys. But first, let's do this. My laundry is going right now. And um, let's clean up. Going home, I'm starting over. Need a Red Bull for this hangover. It wasn't drugs this time, it was you. so much better and it took less than 10 minutes like come on and I also cleaned my toilet too like girl why why do you do this to yourself I did in fact cover good luck babe today so this is gonna be up probably a day or two after you are watching this vlog It's been a few vlogs since I've had you guys in here. Um, hi, what are we doing? Skincare. Today was really fun. I have been putting a lot more time recently in between orders to my doula business. You do not have to be certified or trained to be a doula. It's just, I felt for me to have zero training other than just the knowledge I had on like unmedicated births and hypnobirthing because of my experience. I just felt like that wasn't enough. So in my opinion, I wanted the full training. So I took childbirth education, lactation, and then a birth doula training class. And now I'm in the process of my certification. I had a Zoom call today that I meant to record and I don't know what the hell happened with that, but basically, I'm getting certified to be a birth doula through Dona International, basically the pioneers in doula support. We have to read three books out of like a list that you're given along with write three essays about those and then have a comprehensive reference list that you can give your clients. So that is what I'm working on right now. I had a Zoom call with a local PT organization. They offer not only pelvic floor PT, but others as well. They work with pregnant people. She sent me over a questionnaire um, that kind of helps you gauge when your client may need PT and when to be referred out. The whole purpose of having this list is so you can better help your clients. I'm not a clinical care provider, but there are so many other people that can help them prenatally, postpartum, even years following if they're struggling with like incontinence, depression, things like that. It's important as a doula. I have a comprehensive list of personal references that I have professional relationships with. So it was super important to me to at least meet in person or on Zoom one time with the people I want to refer my clients to so I can get a feel of their practice, speak with them. So that's what I did. Today was my first one. I reached out to a few other IBCLCs in the area and the surrounding Denver metro area, as well as a woman-owned, woman-focused organization for like prenatal postpartum depression and other mental health issues. So I reached out to them. They already got back to me. They said that they forwarded my message to the owner which is really exciting. So the main thing right now at this point, you know, as someone who's already started a business that's now finally three years later, like up and going, is networking, getting in front of people and word of mouth. It's the hardest in the beginning. The biggest thing you're dedicating is your time. So anyways, that's what I did today. That was really exciting. I also recorded a cover of Good Luck Babe. And then as you saw, went to a cute little concert. I love Denver. They have free concerts and fun shit all the time and it's the best, especially for a young mama. I also went to the gym. I finally branched out and I went to the sauna. I went to the cardio area that's not hiding in the fitness center. I went and did abs for the first time in like six months. Reflected on how grateful I am for the schedule I have, like even though some weeks I work like 
50 hours. Some weeks I only work like 15. I'm grateful for that because with my mood fluctuations and such, that's the type of schedule I need. And as long as I can make it work and pay my bills, I don't see anything wrong with it. As I said in last week's vlog, my long-term goal is most certainly doula work. It is so fulfilling. Wow, I just can't even express how like elated that birth made me. I felt so blessed to be a part of it and to, yeah, just support welcoming a new person into the world. It was just so exciting and so beautiful. Childbirth is so beautiful. And it's just so incredible to me that our bodies just know innately what to do. And it was just amazing. And I want to be support for people. I haven't talked about it too much on my channel because like, you know, I'm just now starting up. But just so you guys know, my links to my doula website and everything are always in the bio of all my videos. What a birth doula is, is we offer informational and emotional evidence-based support for pregnancy, labor delivery, and the short time following, so postpartum. I do also offer postpartum doula services at an hourly rate aside from like my birth doula package. Being a birth doula, I offer three visits while you are pregnant. There's no time that's too late to visit. You could literally get a doula at 39 weeks pregnant or at six weeks pregnant and we kind of just make it work for you. Um, everyone does it differently for me. I obviously, like I said, got education on all these topics. So I have like a million, like a filing cabinet full of like different informational guides, handbooks, things like that, handouts, little slips, little brochures about informed consent, breastfeeding, postpartum mood disorders, what the partner can do to help you, prenatal conditions, when you may need to get referred out so that I know who to refer you to, things like that. And so when I meet with people, kind of gauge what they need, and then I put together like a specialized little packet for you. So for example, if you inform me I will not be breastfeeding, I wouldn't include some of the breastfeeding handouts that I have in there that you can educate yourself on. I would just leave those out because you don't need those. So something that's just great about me being my own boss and running my own business is that I, just like my cakes and treats, can fully customize your packet as a client of mine and we can fully customize your birth. If you're getting a plan to C-section, we're gonna plan for a plan C-section. I'm gonna be there to support you. And if you're planning an unmedicated home birth, with the presence of a midwife or physician or clinical care provider, I will be there to support you every single step of the way. There is no right or wrong way to bring a baby into the world. Just to like have an additional support there, like I'm not a therapist, I'm not a doctor, just to have that informational and emotional evidence-based support and encouragement and kind of like a shoulder to cry on and just like have someone to be a listening ear, that would be me. And for the adoption support, that is free. I, like I said, I'm donating my time, to just lend an ear, listen, be there to support you because that's really tough and usually people in those positions do not have like financial abilities to pay someone just to support them like you deserve to be supported no matter what economical status you're in hello basically that's what i do i'm trained in comfort measures emotional support visualizations meditation techniques and things of that sort during labor i myself had an unmedicated intervention free birth so i'm well versed on all of those things and I am going to be taking like some spinning babies courses and things of that nature as time goes on. That's something that this organization heavily, heavily tries to influence on you is to continue getting educated as you go on with your career. And that's exactly what I'll be doing. That's why I'm putting so much time into that because that's like a career, that's fulfilling, that's gonna be changing people's lives. I think that both of my jobs are so cool. I'm involved in people's like biggest events of their lives. I make their wedding cakes. I assist their birth and, and their emotions in delivering a baby like that's so exciting okay voila Egg, rice, veggie bowl with some papaya, slay!
Hi vlog, so as you saw, I just prepped some cookie dough. It's chilling in the fridge for a few minutes. I'm continuing the chores I was doing last night. I have a bunch of clean laundry, so I'm gonna make my bed, fold the laundry, sweep and mop the floor, kind of organize things, and then start prepping those cookies. I have a doula meeting tonight after I drop off Storm to his dad and I'm excited for that because networking has been huge. I've um, recently been in contact, as I said last night, with like a few different places for networking for my referral list, and a bunch of places got back to me today, so more meetings have been set up, which is going really good, and then just now in the middle of like the little time lapse of cleaning my kitchen, I got a call from someone who needs a last minute, super detailed Alice in Wonderland themed cake pop order for next weekend. So that's really exciting. I also start my markets next weekend, so. It's a fun time. It's chill, it's cool, and we are hardworking girls. I love being self-employed because it's like a few hours of work here, a few hours of work there, and it makes me a happy girl. So, yeah. Let's continue, let's continue our day. I have no idea what game show this is, but literally everyone who's there looks like that there's a gun to their head and that they are forced to be there. I just got sushi with a doula friend, and now, of course, I obviously have sweet tooth disease, so I needed a sweet treat and some parchment paper because we're gonna go home and finish the cookies. Okay, it's 1 a.m. I just finished the cookies, have some extras for Storm, and the midnight mocktail just tastes so much better in a wine glass. Like, prove me wrong. I also just watered my plants. They've been neglected. I'm so sorry, plants. Mwah. I just finished a slice of pizza in my bed with no shirt on because we're fucked. The world is going to end. Um, the debate went terribly, terribly wrong, I fear. This is too much for me. What the fuck? Nar, 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 nar. Before you fucking vote this year, read at least a summary or like a lawyer reacts or like something from a fucking reputable site about Project 2025 before you fucking vote. I seriously love maple syrup so much I could go for that. Oh my fucking god. Uh, people need to take IQ tests before they can vote. And I'm not even sitting here saying that I'm the smartest person. Like, honestly, oh my god. Hang on, I'm trailing off, I'm trailing off. Oh, Canada, the place I call my home. Do you want to get your pinky chopped off for reading a book? I'm not even wearing my Apple Watch right now because my heart rate is just, it's just too high. I applied to some doula jobs in the District of Columbia because I'm scared. Um, all I know is that I'm stressed out. <laughs> Storm, where are we going to eat? Paris. <laughs> I want my baby, 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 baby. Come stay by mommy, just in case. Thank you, my love. God, the way I'm so mad right now. I'm trying to record the video to the vocals I recorded and I finally got a good take and I wasn't fucking recording. I was initially wearing a bra, but my boobs are sore and I don't care, so I took it off. But I did finally wanna do a short little Q and A on here because I had asked my Instagram to ask me a few questions so I picked a few because I don't want it to be too lengthy since I understand it's not something everybody, like all of my viewers want, but I picked the three that I guess I liked best, I don't know, or that were most relevant to also the kind of videos that I've been uploading. So let's get right into it. What are three things you would tell your 12 year old self? I really like this question. And the biggest thing that comes to the forefront of my mind immediately is to stop caring so much about 
what other people think about you, specifically men. Stop seeking out male validation. Stop trying to impress people who don't give a fuck about you. Reserve your energy for your friendships and your relationships and your connections that give you energy. Stop just like giving it away for free. Don't talk to your birth dad next year. He's going to hurt your feelings. Don't join the dance team freshman year of high school. There's a lot of things. Oh wait, they, he said three. Name three, okay. Male validation is bullshit. You don't need it. It's gonna fuck with your psyche more than it'll ever help you. It does nothing good, nothing good comes of it. Focus on yourself, bitch. That's number one. Second thing is your self image, your view of yourself, your confidence level, X, Y, and Z is not going to change based on your weight. Stop trying to lose weight. You hate yourself just as much thick as you do thin. Number three would be put more of your time into your talents. Lean more into the arts. Stop trying to conform to what you think is normal, how you think you should be. Ignore everything else and focus on your talents, what you can contribute to the world and stop trying to fit in so much. Those are the three things that I would tell her. Next one is, can you talk about parenting with bipolar disorder? Yeah, so the very, very biggest thing is that I get so irritable and I have very little patience and those are the two things that I'm working on the hardest to fix. The overall thing about bipolar is it's a mood disorder, okay? So if we look at personality as the climate of a region, um, look at mood as the weather. So using Colorado as an example, the temperature, the weather easily changes. It kind of seems like you almost can't predict it. Luckily, I'm on a mood stabilizer, so it's more predictable, but I do find it really tricky sometimes to like remain even keeled and consistent in my reactions to things, in my behavior over the course of weeks to months where I can't necessarily predict my weather. I can't necessarily predict how I'm gonna wake up feeling some days. And that does bleed into parenting. And I think that the most important thing and the thing that I do actively is just communicate with my son and let him know like, mommy woke up not feeling good today. Um, you know, if I'm feeling depressed, I'll kind of describe it to him as like low energy, I feel sick. Um, I'll apologize if I'm being more snappy with him, if I'm seeming impatient. I make it really clear that my moods aren't his responsibility. What he does isn't causing me to suffer. It's not his fault that I am the way I am because I think that those are the things that you hear from kids who grew up with bipolar parents. Those are the things they say a lot, like my mom loved me, but she was like crazy. She would yell all the time. She was really unpredictable and really scary. So I try to be communicative when I can tell I'm in a, different space mentally or when I can tell I'm maybe having mood swings and I think it's good to start it young because he is three years old but he is starting to understand those types of things so just having the open communication is easy but it is really tricky to find like a good balance because to be quite honest like I kind of always feel just a little bit off not quite content it's difficult having to relinquish all like primary wants and needs for yourself because now you have another individual and this is for any type of parent doesn't mean you have to have a mood disorder but you know making sure his needs always come first when i'm struggling mentally can be really challenging because if i already don't have the motivation to like be putting energy into myself and helping myself then i'm definitely hyper focused on putting his shit first and then i start lacking self-care um that's when i gain weight that's when i'm not going to the gym that's when like i will already not have the energy to meet my own needs and because being a parent you put your kids needs first like I'll just completely fall off so that's really hard um I haven't found it hard to like prevent impulsive behavior as much because he gives me the reason I mean he is the reason that I stay on top of my bills that you know I remain making more mature decisions than I did pre motherhood luckily i haven't noticed mania or hypomania affecting parenting too much i just try to be conscious of how my moods look over the span of like a week a quarter six months a year because i don't want him waking up every day and being like what version of my mom am i gonna get that just seems so unfair so I try to be mindful of how like my mood swings affect maybe the way my personality changes, the way that 
my behaviors and actions change, even like my tone of voice and body language and mannerisms. I try to be hyper aware of that because I don't want to scare him. That's like my biggest thing or I don't want him to be like, who is this bitch? Like, the last one I'm going to answer is what is next for you? I like that. And if you guys haven't seen it already, I ran, jogged, speed walked, whatever you want to call it five miles while kind of sharing my testimony, telling you guys my life story. I have quite a few new subscribers since the beginning of the year. So I kind of wanted to just give a brief rundown for people who haven't been around either since the beginning or since I revived my channel in January. And if you haven't seen that, I do kind of discuss in that video that, you know, this is my healing era. And right now the universe is preparing me for my moment, which I do believe is like within the next year or two. So right now I'm just focusing on continuing therapy, bettering myself, self-care, obviously putting parenting first, um, working on the co-parenting relationship that I have with my son's dad, and exercise, organic eating. You know, I'm just putting a lot of energy into myself right now. I have decided like I don't date men anymore, so I'm also exploring more of my sexuality and my own queerness. So what's next for me? I'm kind of like relinquishing to the universe. The universe is going to tell me what's next for me. My moment is gonna find me. That's currently what I'm being prepared for. So um, I don't need to go into too much detail. Obviously I'm continuing to manifest. I have ideas, I have goals and aspirations I wanna meet, but it will all come in due time. So success, success is next, absolutely. Well, I was supposed to have another photo shoot today because the original one that I had in May, it got rained out in May. So me and the photographer have been like trying to reschedule now for a few weekends. And this is like the third time it like hasn't come together. He asked if I could do tomorrow, but I have a lot of work to get done tomorrow. And tonight, like my son's dad is going out. So he's having my son come back over here. Usually I don't have my son on weekends, but I just, you know, I offered to help him out. I don't know, but I'm a little bit frustrated because I've been making more of an effort to be more social and get out there more and I like having a busier schedule. When I'm always home, I start feeling like depressive and weird. I don't know what it is, like I don't want to. When I finally have downtime, all I want to do is just like lay down and drink tea and do nothing, which like I don't know if that's my body telling me to do that or if I'm just being a lazy piece of shit. So I don't know what the rest of today holds, but Obviously, I'll update you guys on it as it happens, clearly. Good morning, it's literally 2 p.m. Just showered, I feel nice and clean. It's hot AF, so that feeling's not gonna last long. My anxiety was so bad last night that I didn't go, bed until, go to bed until four in the morning. I'm gonna get some coffee at the grocery store and maybe fuck around and get a croissant. My sister wants to hang out and she's hungry, so maybe I'll go to like Taco Bell and get us burritos or something. I want like more than anything to be hot, but I just can't stop eating, so I guess it's off the table. <laughs> I just want to thank everyone who's watching my last two videos. The analytics are so good. Like, thank you so much. Oh my God. That makes me so happy that you guys are enjoying my stories and enjoying watching the vlog. I love vlogging. It feels like we're hanging out. It's a fun little community. I look forward to just chatting with you every week. Guys, the way I'm so skinny. I literally ordered an iced coffee with almond milk in it. Emma Chamberlain who?
nice and clean for the bug.